Good morning and welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. I am Nico Van Ostrand. I use they them pronouns and I am this congregation's religious education coordinator. I am joined in worship leadership by our senior minister, the Reverend Mandy Beal, and co-directors of music ministry, Abha and Stephen Deering. Our chalice will be lit by the Nordhaus family and we'll also enjoy dancing by Alice Pulver. We have technical support from our communications coordinator, Sarah Constantakis, and Zoom greeter, Drika DeGraff. BUC is a Unitarian Universalist congregation in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Even in our virtual format, we are a thriving community with a place for everyone. Social justice is an essential component of our church life. We are a capital W welcoming congregation and a green sanctuary congregation. Our social justice work this year is focused on environmental action, wealth inequality, civic engagement, and racial inequality. Our worship services are hosted on Zoom every Sunday morning at 1030 and then later posted on Facebook. After the service, we invite you to stay for virtual coffee hour. And if you are worshiping with us for the first time today, we extend a special welcome to you. We have three announcements this morning. Calling all BUC bakers, the Bake Off fundraiser is coming up on February 14th. Show your love for the BUC community and religious education by volunteering to be a baker. You can sign up to be a BUC baker through Monday, January 25th. The link to sign up is in your weekly email update or look for the orange button on our website. BUC Environmental Action invites you to kiss and tell. Kiss the Ground is a full length documentary about regenerative agriculture, which has the potential to balance our climate, replenish our vast water supplies and feed the world. You're invited to view the film, that's the kiss part, and then join us on January 26th to tell us what you thought about it in a discussion led by a member of Sierra Club Michigan. You can stream the film with a Netflix subscription or create a free account on Vimeo and rent it for $1. After you've watched the film, join us on Tuesday, January 26th at 7 p.m. for the discussion. Zoom access info is on the calendar. And finally, join us this Tuesday, January 19th at 7 p.m. for the next Confronting Racism group meeting. All BU series are welcome and encouraged to participate in the important work of understanding the history, drivers, and impacts of systems of racism and white supremacy and actions we can take to confront these realities and build an equitable and loving community for all. Zoom access info for Tuesday's meeting is on the calendar. Thank you for joining us this morning or whenever you're watching this. Although we are not together physically, we are together in spirit and it is good to be together again. And now our service will begin. Nordhaus family and will be doing the chalice lighting. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. marched in the name of love. Love beyond how we look, where we are from, or who we want to be with. The relevance of his words and actions still resonates with us today. He had a vision of a world where all lives matter, where kindness prevails. With limitless love in our hearts, we must continue the work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. today, tomorrow, and every day. We must march on. Yes, perfect start to our first hymn. It's Sia Hamba. <laughs> Look forward to seeing how we can embody Dr. 
practice team's message with marching, singing, and dancing. Let's see you up on your feet. Big breaths. Here we go. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. comes easy. It comes through hard labor and it comes through toil. It comes through hours of despair and disappointment. And that's the way it goes. There is no crown without a cross. I wish we could get to Easter without going to Good Friday, but history tells us that we got to go by Good Friday before we can get to Easter. That's the long story of freedom, isn't it? Before you get to Canaan, you've got a Red Sea to confront. You have a hardened heart of a Pharaoh to confront. You have the prodigious hilltops of evil in the wilderness to confront. And even when you get up to the promised land, you have giants in the land. The beautiful thing about it is that there are a few people who've been over in the land. They have spied enough to say, even though the giants are there, we can possess the land because we got the internal fiber to stand up amid anything we have to face. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to create a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. Our weekly offering serves as an ongoing reminder of the mission. Many of you make an annual pledge to the, to the congregation. That is what we use to pay the bills but a weekly con contribution to the offering is a way of saying yes. Yes, this week I choose to live a life of integrity, learning, service, and joy. It is a recommitment to that mission as well as a strengthening of the bonds between you and the congregation and you and the congregants. Contributions can be made using Venmo with username at BUCMI through the website or just by a simple check in the mail. However it is that you choose to give, please do so with a heart of gratitude and a heart of generosity. The offertory song this morning, you will recognize, was written in 1984 as a tribute to Dr. King. Songwriters are Adam Clayton, David Evans, and Paul Hewson, and you too recorded this. Join in and sing. Come in the 
and prayer. We begin with a sharing of joys and sorrows from our community, and for this sharing, we pause the recording. I invite you now to settle into your space and breathe deeply into a spirit of meditation or prayer. As you breathe, hold both of your hands out in front of you like this, with your palms up. Imagine that you are holding everything that you know about racism, and justice and privilege in your two hands. Feel the weight of it pressing against your palms. Sit with that weight for a moment. When you are ready, carefully, lovingly gather everything that you know about racism and justice and privilege into one of your hands, leaving the other empty and close the fingers of your one hand around everything that you know and keep it safe there. Feel the emptiness of your other hand, palm open, ready to receive. services we have a story but today we have a reading instead it was our hope to center the work of people of color in our service today and one of the ways that we're going to do that is by sharing a reading by a poet whose name is Mahogany L. Brown now this of course is dependent upon Reverend Mandy's ability to use technology and we all know that that is dicey business sometimes. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Did it show right at the very end? I tell you what, this is one of those things that I wish that they covered more in divinity school. There we go. Oh, no. Why? Okay, this is 
Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. I'm sorry, people, bear with me. And also, can we take a moment to say thank God for Sarah Constantakis, who is able to do this every week without any level of issue? Oh man, we are so lucky. Okay. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna read you this story, and then I'm gonna tell you that there's lovely pictures. This is from a book called Woke, A Young Poet's Call to Justice. It was done in collaboration between Mahogany L. Brown, who is the author of this poem, and also with Elizabeth Acevedo and Olivia Gatwood. The illustrations are by Theodore Taylor III. And again, I'm sorry that you're not gonna be able to see those illustrations today, but I think everybody should get a copy of this and then you'll see the illustrations. Okay, this is called Write To After Claude McKay. And the reason it's called that is because there was a poet whose name was Claude McKay, who was a Jamaican American poet, part of the Harlem Renaissance. And this poet, Mahogany L. Brown, wrote her poem referencing some of his work. If we must live, let it not be in silence, each shadow surrounding our right to be outraged. Let us not sit hands crossed while our stomachs growl, upset, full of bad food and assembly line ideas. Listen closely, our bodies bubbling up angrily at the lies we have been fed. If we must live, let no one decide how our hearts will beat or how our song should be sung, or if our neighborhoods are worth protecting or if we are allowed to walk into stores freely. If we must live, let it be a true life, one full of choices and opportunities, one that isn't designed to push us into a corner, keep us quiet and formidable, keep us without unique opinions and educated understandings. If we must live, and we must, let it be with our fists in the air to remind the people that we will speak up for what is right, we will always stand up against that which brings harm. We will demand what is just, not only for our own lives, but for the lives that are impacted by injustice. Let us live to fight for a better day, every day, for everyone. Today's homily is for people of color. We are so often the numerical minority in Unitarian Universalist spaces that we get minorityed right out of existence. Our experiences are either ignored completely or we're talked about like hypotheticals instead of the vital members of UU faith whose theories and labor drive UU anti-racism work. Decentering BIPOC UUs on the day before Martin Luther King Day, a day that exists to call attention to racial justice, simply did not sit right with me. And I know it is problematic in so many ways that we are lumped into this non-white category, but I wanted to speak to you from my Filipino American perspective and hope that some of it resonates with some portion of your life experience. And white people, you can learn a lot by practicing listening deeply, not taking up space, sitting with your discomfort, in fact, that is one of the most important skills you need to be a white ally. And I genuinely hope that you do want to be a white ally. So please stay in the Zoom meeting. Don't check out or close down or hide behind defensiveness. Stay with me, stay open. I decided to address this homily to you, BIPOC Unitarian Universalist, because I've been to so many UU racial justice events that center whiteness that seem to think UU racial justice work peaked with James Reeb and Viola Liuzzo. And so many of those events close with calls for racial unity, which ultimately are not actually calls for radical healing and reconciliation, but rather demands that we allow a whiteness to dictate the ways in which we must interact with and resist whiteness. This fascination with protecting white comfort at any cost leads to reinforcing white supremacy in subtle ways, like censoring our feelings, leaving no space for our genuine hurt and anger, but instead having us parade along our joy and our stories of strength. 
And I'm not arguing that we should not celebrate those things. I'm saying we shouldn't be asked to focus solely on positives so that our white colleagues and family members and friends can go on ignoring their role in the white supremacist systems that actively harm us. In the lead up to the 2020 presidential election, I was so frequently required in white dominated spaces to center joy, to set aside my fear and grief long enough to share some contrived story about joy in my life. Each instance of this made me more angry than the last, especially when just a few days prior, I was with my mom in a predominantly white neighborhood that we've frequented for years, and a flotilla of boats went past on the river playing loud music and shouting political slogans across the water. And I stood there in the park I go to every Saturday morning and identified the nearest concrete pillar wide enough for me to hide behind. I ran scenarios in my head of what I would do to shield and protect my mom should the shouts turn into something more something I think about far more often than anyone should have to. The day after armed right-wing Americans invaded the Capitol, a white colleague of mine asked me how I'm doing, and I poured out an incoherent mess of my rage and fear and hopelessness, and she responded by saying, I'm choosing joy. I've decided that they don't get to ruin my day. And I shut my mouth, my head spinning with stories from former UUs who had brought their black or brown wholeness into Unitarian Universalism and left again after being repeatedly silenced and invalidated. Unitarian Universalism does have some harmful roots and practices and it calls us to be better. It's a challenging duality, but there is no alternative for our faith or for our country Racial unity of the kind Martin Luther King dreamed of requires us not to diminish ourselves to the comfort level of white supremacy, but rather to feel and embody joy on our terms. In this morning's opening words, Martin Luther King reminds us that others have seen the promised land. He says, they have spied enough to say, even though the giants are there, we can possess the land because we got the internal fiber to stand up amid anything that we have to face. This doesn't mean possessing the land in the way of European colonizers stealing land from indigenous peoples through genocide, but rather a claiming of space. It's flooding phone lines and inboxes with calls for justice for uprising arrestees and people on death row. It's indigenous creators on social media dancing and celebrating their traditions and raising awareness for missing and murdered indigenous women. Claiming space is mar marching for racial justice and ending up surrounded by hundreds of police officers with their guns and riot gear, armored cars and officers on horseback, a tank rolling up towards us, a helicopter spotlight shining down, the anxiety threatening to bubble out of my stomach cold and hungry and stuck there for far longer than we'd intended, and music, a spontaneous dance party mostly Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and Asian youth, that raw joy of daring to claim space, dancing and singing at a protest, as a form of protest. If we must live, says Mahogany L. Brown, and we must, let it be with our fists in the air. Joy is loud. It takes up space and demands better for us. If not for us, then for our loved ones, and if not for them, then for everyone who comes after us. One of the many often repeated quotes from Martin Luther King tells us, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. <laughs> Barack Obama, the only black president in this country's 244 year history, loves this quote too. And it's actually a paraphrase of a sermon by Unitarian minister Theodore Parker. And all three of those leaders' lives in different ways illustrate the long, long arc of the moral universe. Yet none of them meant that we get to put our feet up and trust the arc to bend on its own. That arc does not exist naturally. It is not predetermined. I imagine many of you have personal painful stories that show this to be true. Recent history, and the threats of further violent attacks in the coming days have shown us that forces of white supremacy and injustice of all kinds continually try to halt justice. The arc of the moral universe bends towards justice only because we work hard to make it so. As I watched live streams of the attack on the Capitol on the 6th, I lay on my floor with a headache 
and a pit in my stomach, feeling the now familiar weight of hopelessness and fear combined with a weary unsurprise, wondering desperately how I can still believe in racial justice and abolition in the face of such blatant white supremacist violence. But I must believe that racial justice is vital, not only because my values and principles call me to, but also because giving up on racial justice is giving up on the path that leads to that promised land, to joy. Racism is destructive and violent and affecting us right now. It is affecting our quality of life, our health, our interactions with others. We deserve so much better and we may never get it. But I am comforted in my conviction that it is not important that I ever set my own eyes on true racial justice as long as someone makes it over those hilltops to see it. This is a movement, not a solitary journey. This is one heartbeat in the long arc of solidarity and justice. And I don't mean this to take away from the reality of pain and suffering in this moment, but I am clear in my mind that there is no way forward except to aspire through our every action for justice. If not for us, then for our loved ones. And if not for them, then for everyone who comes after us. Our closing hymn today is number 1007, There's a River Flowing in My Soul. And this morning we have uh, Alice Pulver, who will be providing some interpretive dance as we join together in our final hymn, There's a River. <laughs> of the world and the rest of the week and the change in the country's leadership though not a change in the necessity for racial justice work may you claim space and find joy on your own terms in the words of octavia butler so be it see to it